What do you think about when you're doing something that is as physically challenging as a high rocks race? I personally think this is a topic that doesn't get discussed enough because it is so important. When you're pushing yourself to your limit and your body is screaming for you to stop, do you listen to it? Do you slow down? Do you make yourself more comfortable? Or do you manage to push yourself through it? The decisions you make in those moments can make a huge difference to your overall finishing time. I recently got to sit with Rich Ryan, who's an elite level high rocks athlete. He was part of the Elite 15 men's race at the Las Vegas World Championships in 2022, where he ultimately finished seventh. And we had a really long chat about all things high rocks. In the upcoming clips, though, are the parts where we discuss the mindset aspects of the sport. And I think it's a really useful discussion. I think it's a really important discussion. And I hope you find it useful. If we talk about that that world championship race at the elites, how do you for someone like me that races a high rocks? I'm I'm really racing against my my previous time. I'm trying to beat my previous time. Whereas for you guys, it is more racing um, to a certain extent, at least in those world championships. Do do you still go into it with with your tactics in terms of pacing yourself, like how you want to race your race, um, you know, your splits, all that, or are you? When you're in the race, are you having to take consideration of what, what the others are doing? Yeah, that's a good question because, <clears throat> like, I, I kind of relate the high rocks to, like, a marathon, right? Like, if you know what your marathon pace could be, you could sit there and just hang, and you should be able to run, like, within reason around your goal. And maybe if you're feeling good toward the end, you could pick it up, or if you're just, like, hanging on to finish. In high rocks, it's kind of the same. If you get out, if, for me anyway, if I get – out of my comfort zone early, it's going to be hard for me to, to bounce back and run a good race when I need to start racing. So I kind of do a split where I need to kind of stay within my race plan with, for the first three to five stations, depending on what race it is. And then at a certain point, then it becomes more about a race and, and putting myself in, in the best place possible. And I'm, I'm still, I still only have, I think six, six races under my belt. So I'm still learning the different tactics and how much that would like, if I was to go out and run harder and do the ski harder, like what would that do to my sled push? I'm, I'm not quite sure. And I've just been so focused on the sleds and, and making sure that like, I manage those and get through those that it's hard for me to even think about racing until after the sleds are done. So yeah. it's a bit of a combo. I mean, as I get more confident and build up a little bit more capacity, I think I'll be able to race a little bit sooner. Like I think like a Ryan Kent or a Hunter, I think that they are able to, to race anybody from the front. Like they're not scared of any station. They can always get it back, but like, nothing's going to take them out. Then on, on the other side of the, the spectrum is someone like Tobias who doesn't really engage early. It doesn't seem like, and he does, he's very dialed in with his own race tactics, but his fitness is so good that he'll, he'll never lose too much ground if he just is, stays within himself and, and when it's time to go he's ready to go so it's a bit of a combo it's a work in progress so i'm hoping this year i'll be able to race a little bit more than than just needing to kind of stick to my splits yeah i don't know i don't know if you saw i've done an article about you know how those positions in those races changed and like in, in the men's race it was it was like the the podium was almost set like after the ski you know it was like mm. hunter was mm. leading and it was like barely anything changed after that it was quite interesting but i think that it's, it's possibly like you say it's just like the nature of you know hunter and and, and kent and um because the women on the women's side it was different like chris was whatever you know so like the place. lunges right yeah, yeah 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 right and hunter is just like so good at the machine work that and he's so and he's just kind of like an anomaly physically out there that <laughs> like if the race was flipped or, so, or something like if it started with wall balls and then kind of went backwards, it, it probably would, it would like, there would be more of a race with Hunter. Um, but he's just such, so good at that ski and the sleds that it's hard to kind of like match him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm interested to know like what, what's going through your head when, when you're in a race, like you're redlining, um, what are you thinking about? You know, are you, are you, are you trying to think happy thoughts? Are you like, are you motivated by something what, what drives you on when, when you're in that spot? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, there's a lot of different techniques and I've practiced them uh, throughout the years and they all work to a varying degree. Like what you said, like happy thoughts, having like a mantra, right? Like mm -hmm. I like to, I like to think of things as like almost belittling my effort that, or like the, the race that I'm doing, like, just like, oh, this is easy. I feel great. I feel smooth. Even like, even it's, it, that might not be the case. 
and to a certain point that works, but there, but if you're lying to yourself, you'll know it, <laughs> you know, and you're like, no, this actually sucks. And you're trying to, and like the opposite of feeling good is feeling bad. It's like, oh yeah, I actually feel good. And you don't, and you're like, oh, I feel bad. And then mentally you're just like sinking back down to another place. The one, one thing that I found is really helpful, especially in these hybrid events is just accepting the feeling that you're, that you're in and just kind of sitting in whatever that feels mm -hmm. like and just acknowledging what that is. Right. So it's almost like a, a, a mindfulness practice where in mindfulness, you know, you have a thought that comes in and it doesn't mean you're doing a bad job in meditating or being mindful. It's just that it's it, your thoughts there and then it can go. Right. And then it's nothing but a thought. Like it's the same with the feeling for these events. Like this just feels this way. This isn't pain. This isn't like, nothing's really necessarily wrong. It's just like a different stimulus. And if you could just sit there and just kind of like hone in on how that feels and just be very present in that moment, it keeps my mind from being like, oh, this is wrong. Something's bad. Something, this isn't right. I'm not I'm dying. My times are slow. But if I could just sit there and kind of feel it and even just acknowledge it as not good, not bad, it just what it is, it's just a feeling that's really helpful. And then you can, then I found that I'm able to kind of go a little bit further into that. It's like, well, let's see what this feeling feels like. If I keep going, <laughs> like, what does it feel like if I go a little bit faster? Is it, is it, what's that stimulus kind of feel like? So being present and staying right in it, it's hard because it's all these bells and whistles that are going off, right? Like your respiration gets high, like you're having like these things happen inside of you where it's, it's more lactates being produced. Like there's an actual like burning that's happening and, and, your body's trying to slow you down as much as possible, but if you can just kind of sit in it and just feel it, it just kind of takes away the scariness of it. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like not passing judgment on it. Almost. It's just like this, this is what it is. Stoic. It's what it is. Yeah. Very much. Right. That's a good way to put it. It's a stoic approach for it. Just, this is, this isn't good. This isn't bad. It's just where I am right now. And even if you can kind of flip it and enjoy the feeling, a little yeah, bit more yeah. of the, on the sadistic side, be like, Hey, this is interesting. Like I don't spend, I'm, I'm always in one specific state almost like, you know, 99% of my time, I feel a certain way. This is the only time I get to feel like this. So like, kind of like indulging yourself and feeling like, like that it's interesting. It's like a different way to kind of feel, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that that's been pretty helpful recently on my end. What about you? What do you got on? What do you like to do for, I'm 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 quite into uh, I quite like like the stoicism. Uh, I'm quite into stoicism in in, in general. So I, I do try and sort of stay sort of stoic about it. Like that that that, that, that talks to me like not passing judgment on it. This this is what it is. Um, I do like I do try and think of like what what would motivate me. Like I th I, I think that the fact that high rocks. I don't race like hundreds of races every year. That's not like playing a football match every weekend. So it's like, I, 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 I've got to push myself in this one because I'm not going to get another chance to race and get another mm -hmm. time and for, for another three months. And like, I don't want to be fucked off for the next three months that I didn't really push myself. Like. And so I, 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 I've gone through like before a race, I try and think, well, what, what is going to motivate me in those situations? And like, I found that, um, yeah, not being able to race for another three months and like being a little bit pissed off with the time that I've got, um, I just think like I'm, I'm, I'm not going to accept that. So it's yeah. a missed opportunity, right? You yeah. don't get that opportunity much, so you don't want to squander it. It's like, and then that kind of boils back down to why you're doing it in the first place, right? Like, and for me, it's like I, I ultimately like want to be proud of myself as who I am as an athlete, right? So that's the thing that kind of runs that the course in those moments where it's like I have this opportunity now. And I have the choice to either like give into this or to sit in it or to push forward. Right. And I would feel proud of myself if I chose the latter. And if I just like took it head on and, and just made it happen. So like, that's like, and I'll ask myself, like, is it worth it to do that? Right. Like, and if you have a, a reason that's worth it, like it's the answer is always yes. Right. No matter what it is like, Oh, I want to be a good, uh, a good example for my kids. Right. Like, Oh, then in those moments, is it worth it pushing forward? It's an opportunity to, like show your, your children or whatever it is that you, that you find that, that, that speaks to you the most, like you don't have that opportunity too often. Right. Uh, so I do yeah. like that, that mindset too. It's like, I can't squander this. It's worth it to me to keep going. And just like, but being in tune with that, because a lot of times it's like, Oh, I want to run a sub 70 at high rocks. Like why? It's like, I don't know. It seems cool. It's like, well, <laughs> yeah, I guess. But like, 
why is it cool? Like, why is that cool to you? You know? Yeah. So it boils back down to, to the personal, the why. Kip, Kip, Kip Choge like smiles through his marathon, didn't he? And I've, I've tried that. I've tried the, I've tried the smiling. It just, it just don't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're lying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Works for yeah, him though. It seems, it seems to work for him. Yeah. That, and that's funny. Like one thing that's also interesting that I've used in the past is like kind of like the self-talk that you mentioned uh, and doing it from a third person, like talking to yourself in the voice of uh, your wife or your sibling or your parents or something like that and have them give you encouraging words. That's actually, that, that to me helps a lot too. So like hearing my dad say my name and say like, good job or something like that has been, is also uh, a pretty helpful way to, to kind of turn things positive, you know? Okay. Nice. All right. Thanks for your time today. I think we, we, we can probably wrap up there. Do you want to tell people about what you do? You do, you do some coaching, you work with people on, on plans and so on. Yep. Do some coaching, got some, a uh, couple one-on-one spots open, not a ton, but yeah, a lot of people were getting prepared for this high rock season. There's some group coaching that we do, uh, at, um, where it's just kind of generally getting people prepared and we'll build up a, a building a taper for high rocks and for DECA, if that's something that you're interested in and one on and one off plans. So if you want a 12, 12 week, eight week high rocks plan, we could do that for you as well. Um, everything's at reinforced running. It's reinforced underscore running underscore rich on Instagram, uh, reinforced running podcast, uh, rich Ryan on YouTube, which is a lot of, uh, which is a lot of like hybrid content on there. A lot of like to do, like how to do the burpee broad jumps and things like that. And then race brain podcast is more of a, uh, talk sports talk show, I guess you would say around the sport of hybrid and, uh, OCR, if you're interested in, in talking about that, talking about and hearing about that stuff. All right. Awesome. All right. Brilliant. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Cool. Greg. Appreciate it. Thank All you. Right. Take care, everyone.